And now, the most lit late night show in the country. It's Hella Late with Rob Shirell. Welcome to Hella Late, the late night show that grew up black but was still never picked for basketball. I'm your host, Rob Shirell. And tonight we have a pretty great episode to celebrate the end of Women's Month. This episode was written all by women and starring all women. We have Miss Indiana University 2017, one of the few students in the country majoring in medical cannabis studies, and we have a very talented spoken word artist. Quick thank you to Arsenio Hall who gave us a shout out the other day. It's hella late, but don't sleep. Thanks for tuning in tonight and let's get right into what's been in the news. Fans of the board game Monopoly voted last month to remove the classic thimble token from the game's lineup because the game's developers thought it was too outdated. Replacing the thimble? A T-Rex. Because nothing says cool and hip like a lizard that lived 35 million years ago. <laughs> Major landmarks around the world turned off their lights for Earth Hour to bring attention to climate change. Steve Bannon was going to turn off the White House lights, but only until he could see how many Trumps it could take to change a light bulb. <laughs> Kylie Jenner stirred some controversy after naming one of her new blushes barely legal. Hmm, I wonder what could have inspired that. <laughs> Former reality star of TLC's John and Kate Plus 8, John Goslin, made his debut as a male stripper in an Atlantic City strip club because nothing gets the ladies going more than a man paying child support for eight shits. <laughs> after voting for President Trump, an Indiana woman was shocked after learning that her husband will be deported. She said she wasn't worried when she voted because he wasn't a bad hombre. In unrelated news, I stuck my hand in a mousetrap and I didn't think it would hurt because I'm not a mouse. <laughs> a new trend has emerged in the world of cosmetics. Glitter butt makeup is now a thing. So ladies, if your man comes home with a face full of glitter, He's not taking arts and crafts, he's taking arts and ass. <laughs> a park sign has requested to people to stop feeding ducks bread because of its low nutritional value. See, even animals can't shut up about going gluten-free. <laughs> All right, so our next guest is doing something not many people would think to do, and it's possibly one of the greatest things ever. She is majoring in medicinal cannabis studies. Please help me welcome Alexandria Bell. Welcome to the to the show. Thank you for having me. Um, <laughs> how do you how do you feel right now? Um, feeling pretty good. I'm also really tired because really, you know really finals tired. and well not finals but like exams and stuff. Yeah, that so. is uh, that is definitely happening right now. You know, no matter what major you are, exams are terrible. <laughs> they yeah. Suck. So and, and I think that's one of the things that you uh, that you kind of pointed out to me was that you're a studier. I mean, we, we live in a like a party definitely. type of atmosphere, but you're a studier. Over, definitely, over, over definitely. Party. Right. Yeah. So, so how do you how do you <laughs> how do you do that? Because I pick up a book and I go to sleep immediately. How um, do you? I don't know. I like to learn. I like to expand my knowledge. I guess. Mm -hmm. So I'm really a nerd. Really. So it, it it doesn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell me about your your program because uh, medical cannabis studies is it's 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 a little unorthodox. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Yeah. It's a little unorthodox. Tell me about kind of what your thoughts were when you said okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to study, study marijuana. Well, I feel like college is the time to, like, find what you're passionate about and mm -hmm. then set your future up so that way you can be successful and you wake up and love your career and not just, like, oh, I have to go to work today. Exactly, yeah. So I knew that I was going to get my Ph.D. Well, I plan on getting my Ph.D. Oh, in neuroscience. Doc, doctor, <laughs> doctor, okay. Loan yeah. me some money. <laughs> After, and I knew that I wanted to focus my research around cannabis and, like, its effects on the brain. And so I just wasn't sure, like, what to major in. So I started out pre-law, oh, and okay. then I went to psychology, and then I went to neuroscience, Ooh, and then I went back to psychology. Yeah, and then 
I made my own major. <laughs> so tell you gotta you gotta tell me because I know people's expressions when you tell because I'm a stand up comedy major and mm -hmm. I know when I tell people what I'm studying it raises a couple eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Tell me the reactions you got from you know friends, family, you know the strangers when you say, uh, yeah, this is what I'm going to school for. Um, for the most part, they're usually like, oh, that's so cool, or they'll ask me like how I um, came up with the idea or how I went about doing it, but I haven't had any negative um, comments to my face, <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, so I want, you, I want you to explain a little bit about uh, why you think it's so important in the re relevancy, because this is something you're passionate about, sure, this mm -hmm. is what you love. Tell people why weed is the new thing. Well, I don't want to say it's the new thing because it's been around since before it time has. started. So it's nothing new, but um, I think the stigma on it is what gets people, mm. you know, because it's doing all these wonderful things in states where it's legal and then where it's states where it's not legal and yeah. people don't have access to it. It's, I, it's I wish I had access sad. to it right now. <laughs> I, wish I, had, I wish I had really a lot of access. <laughs> it's kind of sad, and it's it's not so that I'm – a weed enthusiast, and I don't want to come off that way. I'm just really passionate about like explaining the benefits of it, and uh, well, medically. Yeah, and, medically, yeah. And the compounds in it that are specifically like beneficial to people. Yeah, so. I, th I think I think people don't pay attention to the fact that you know the, uh, the, these these different types of treatment are very valid. You know, we mm -hmm. live in a, we live in an age where we have. Uh, where diseases run rampant, we have ec epidemics that happen you know, worldwide. Mm -hmm. I think looking at alternative means of treatment is very viable and you know something that we should we should be doing. So I applaud you. Thank you. You're doing you know, you're living my dream. I wish I had some. Uh, wish I, I I I also studied marijuana. I study study freaking jokes. Um, so what are, what are your plans in the future? You know after you graduate, the things you want to do within the pro, uh, the major because how how far mm -hmm. along are you in it? Um. Well, it doesn't even technically start until next semester because okay. I'm in English now, so I have uh, to like get certified into my college and all that. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you what do you want to do uh, after you graduate? What do you want to do while you're in it? Once you once you're officially uh, within it, this major, it. yeah. Um, well, for my senior project, I plan to either go to Cali or to Colorado and like go to a cannabis college and experience that because IU doesn't offer any um, classes just about marijuana, so mm -hmm. I feel like I it, it'd be good to synthesis, synthesize that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I also want to talk to patients and doctors and researchers and just, like, really share what it's about, you know, so that way it's not stigmatized when people think about it, you know. And I understand that everybody's going to have their own opinion mm -hmm. about it, and I just feel like as long as your opinion is based on, you know, valid information, that's okay. I'm going to respect your opinion. Exactly. But if your opinion's based on, like, what you know about little Pookie who smokes a who smokes <laughs> little weed, like, I I'm going to be Pookie like, smoke weed. okay. <laughs> All right, well, but, uh, oh, sorry. No, no, go, no, go ahead. <laughs> you have anything oh, to wrap up with? Yeah. yeah, I was just going to say, after college, I plan on getting my Ph.D. in neuroscience and then doing my own research after that. Okay. Well, um, I want to thank you. Thank you for coming to the show. Um, thanks for coming to the show. And I also want to say that um, – we have a lot of things going on in our society right now, um, and things like this, people that want to step out of the, the comfort zone to explore new, new methods of treatment uh, medically, uh, very applaudable. So uh, Alexandria, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, and um, we're going to go right into our, uh, to our next segment here. So I feel like we don't talk about social topics enough in our society, things like misogyny or institutionalized racism. But here on Hell Late, we are woke as hell. So we decided to take our social consciousness to a place where people can't run from them. Welcome once again to our favorite segment, Woke on an Elevator. Come on, elevator, join the party. <laughs> no one knows what's going on with you. <laughs> you guys ever heard the, uh, about the term about toxic masculinity? Really into masculinity. How does it masculinity? Okay, so like it's the it's the idea that we're forced as men or males in our society to act or behave a certain way, and you kind of unconsciously sometimes fall into line of it. So, do you feel okay to cry? Uh, no. You don't like to cry? Yeah. That's okay if you want to cry. Crying is fine. No matter you know what sex you are. Have a good one. Yeah. Yeah. You feel okay? Yeah. What, do, you, do you like to cry? I, like, I love to cry. Crying is great. Okay, okay to cry? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you're next. <laughs> do you uh, do you think that racism is systemic in any way, or no? I don't think so. You don't think, I so, think so? What it's individual? Why is that? If I were to say everyone has the right to choose their own thing, 
and Sue Schwartz? Do you, I mean, what, do you, what, do you, what, what evidence do you have for me on that? I mean, I, I have the evidence, but I just want to know what you think. Well, if I were to tell you that, you know, Flint, Michigan, you know, still doesn't have clean water and studies and reports have come out that race did play a factor in that or weight or wealth disparity, what would you say to that? I would say I don't have enough information myself to know. Hey, well, you've been woke on an elevator. The Flint water crisis is one good example of something like that. Uh, prisons? Prisons, oh, prisons, yes. How can we forget the, the school to prison pipeline? Would you say that you think that gender lies on a spectrum, or is it more binary of a concept? Oh, I definitely think it lies on a spectrum. I would say definitely binary. Binary, why is that? Because of the Bible. Oh, biblical, okay, okay. Um, because, like, sexuality can be binary, but gender is up to you, so if somebody, like, doesn't want to be on um, binary, then it's nobody's business to tell them not to. Sociological studies have shown that, you know, gender lies on a spectrum between, you know, the binary polarization of male and female, and because you know, we have all these self-identities that we kind of conform to or believe about ourselves. All right, so tonight on the show, we have a special guest. Uh, she is one of only three black women to wear this crown. Please help me welcome Anaya Birdsong, Miss Indiana University 2017. <laughs> welcome to Hella, uh, Hella Lake Ross Real. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Miss Indiana University, Miss Miss IU, yeah. Tell me about a little about uh, your, your crown, your, your crowning, your crown. How does it feel to have a crown on your head? I have a hat. It's not equal <laughs> of importance, but I, mean, I, I want to wear it. Yeah, you. No, I mean, no, no, please don't. I mean, okay, I'm not, I'm not, not going right to actually wear it. Like I, I want the, okay. the crown. Got it. So um, actually at the pageant, it was really interesting because mm -hmm. I honestly, I've never done any experience. I haven't had any prior experience with pageants. What, really? And you just came and won? Yeah, just well, you had, stole the I title. Know, I know there were some people in there very upset. Well, you know, a couple parents got up at the end, you know. For real? Were they trying to yeah. fight you? Well, no, no, oh. no. No, too many say, family hey, members could, there to start. Hey, <laughs> hey, you know, roll deep in that thing. <laughs> um, but it was just so surreal for me, honestly, because I just wanted to do it. I, it's my senior year. Mm -hmm. I just like, you know, it would be something I've always thought of doing. And, you know, why not? You know, you can just put everything online and just everything, you know. So with that being said, I was really excited to win. And with the crown, I honestly was just like, I couldn't, like, it just, I couldn't believe it. So when they say, Miss Indiana University, Anaya Bird song, you're like, oh my God, it's me. Yeah, I was just like kind of frozen in time, honestly. But okay, so, so tell me about the, the woman behind the crown. Uh, I, I believe uh, you mentioned you were studying, uh, you were studying biology in your pre med. Mm -hmm. So soon to be one day Dr. Bird song? Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Another doctor on the show. I'm really going to need some money from y'all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think you mentioned uh, earlier that your being crowned Miss Indiana University uh, meant a lot to you because uh, you wanted to be an inspiration to others, right? Right. Like other um, other other females who were underrepresented mm -hmm. in, in in your STEM field. So right. wh why why would, why did you choose that direction to kind of go? So with that direction, it just made the most sense for me, mm -hmm. considering I am a black woman in STEM. You are. And so I'm a biology pre med major, and you know, being in the Miss America organization, you have to have a platform to where you kind of can just effectively communicate where you want to be as far as doing community involvement, what makes the most sense to you, and STEM outreach is the biggest thing for me. So my platform is STEM outreach, overcoming stereotypes mm -hmm. and gender biases. Oh, wow. And so, yeah, mouthful. <laughs> um, yes, but that with that platform, it just made the most sense to me because I just want to inspire and just promote, you know, STEM is a great field to be in. And yeah, you can definitely. be, honestly, like a huge pioneer. And it doesn't matter, you know, your color, your skin, your gender, any of those things that kind of go into that. So I, I remember uh, within your, your interview, because I believe in the pageant you must be interviewed uh, to progress on, and you talked a little, a little bit about your, your STEM uh, past and your STEM background, yes. but you also mentioned that you had a, uh, a moment where you made the judges laugh. Yes, now, is I it, did. Did you tell a joke? or? So with that, like, I was so nervous for the interview. Mm -hmm. I usually am, but I was really nervous this time because I had no idea what to expect. So I was just trying to, the way I cope is like I laugh and I like crack jokes and you know, trying to, you know, you better than, You better than me? Um, maybe we can try that one day. You we paused can, a little too much there and, and well, I, yeah, in your mind you were like, yes, yes I am. Yeah, <laughs> somewhat, but um, I don't want to take your shine, you know, so I'm gonna stay in my so. crown. Um, but I'll always do the comedy. But at that, I was just like, I made this really weird joke, mm -hmm. and you know how you like you're like the biggest supporter of your own jokes, so you laugh like yeah. really like awkwardly. Well, I had an awkward laugh, and like, do you, do you want to hear it? Yo, oh, I gotta hear it. Okay, it, so it's a, it's it a requirement. Just, it was just like that. I said what I had to say, and I was like, 
And you know, <laughs> and so like that was my laugh. And I, I know it's like crickets, right? Yes. Nobody laughed. Like they, they like smiled and they were just like, like, what? Okay. Like, yeah. But it made sense. It. If you were in there, it made sense. It just. What, so can can you do the laugh one more time? How did you do the laugh? <laughs> <laughs> like, like the no, white chicks. It was not. What a beautiful <laughs> chocolate woman! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it can go up there with those, but it okay, was great. That. So, what are your what are your plans in the future? I know that currently <laughs> you're also doing a lot of uh, a lot of things. You were an intern for Black Women uh, in Technology for the yes. Center of Excellence for Women. Mm -hmm. Well, another mouthful, but an amazing mouthful. Yeah, thank uh, you. Like a spoonful of Cheerios. Shameless <laughs> plug. Um, but you're also involved in EMT, and is that Epiphany Modeling Troupe? Correct. Hey, shout out to EMT, Epiphany Modeling Troupe. Yeah. Here y'all we got. <laughs> right. Um, so what are your plans after uh, next? Because you're not done, right? You have more to do. Yes. So I have more schooling to go, you know, looking forward in the future. But um, actually I'm taking a gap year. Mm -hmm. So once I graduate in May, I'll have that kind of year to do my MCAT applications, admissions, and everything mm -hmm. like that. So that's when I'm also going to get a job as well. So I just want to kind of find out what's my niche, good you know? Old, so building myself in the professional world. So that's what I'll be doing, honestly, after I graduate. Okay, and I believe you're not done with uh, with these pageants either because I think as as Miss Indiana University 2017, mm -hmm. you have, uh, you, it's, a, it's a prelude to, to more pageants, right? Right. So Miss Indiana University is a preliminary to Miss Indiana, mm -hmm. and that is going to be in June 14th through the 17th. Okay. Yes, yeah, so they check us into a hotel, all the title holders. It's like 35 girls. Wow. And, yeah, including myself. And there's also teens that are going to be there who won, you know, for the title. Unfortunately, I don't have a teen. I really wish I did. Um, <laughs> but, so, yeah, so we're all going to be in a hotel, and we're going to be doing events for that whole week in June for uh, Miss Indiana. And so I'll be competing. So hopefully hey, you guys hey, well, cheer well, me on. Yeah, hopefully you, uh, <laughs> you snatch that crown again. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Anaya, for, uh, for for coming on the show tonight. Um, it was, it's been it's been a blast. Uh, you can catch her and support her again. She she'll be pro, uh, she'll be competing again for Miss Indiana on June fourteenth. Uh, we wish her the best of luck. And now that we've heard from her, let's take a look at some pictures that we have from her crowning moment. have a special performance on the show tonight. We have a powerful poet, she's dope, and we can't have a black late night show without having some spoken word. So here is Bailey Hope performing Angry Black Woman by Portia O. Let me just say that I am a very beautiful person. I'm funny, I'm sweet, I'm intelligent, I'm awkward, and I just want to say this because I'm a little tired of this stereotype of the angry black woman, whoop de doo right? Because as you can see, I am black and a woman, and I'm not angry at all. Hell, I'm pissed the fuck off. I'm mad as hell. I'm so mad. I'm getting ready to break my foot off in everybody's ass, but pretend this is class so I can tell you why I'm mad at the education system. Mad because education is key, yet they keep the poor locked out. They get hand-me-down books and hand-me-down chairs. Hand-me-down teachers, they give them hand-me-down stairs. I'm pissed off at gentrification. Mad because the rich be Robin Hood and Robin Hood was just a motherfucking myth. I'm mad that Barbie is a standard of beauty. I hate that fruits and vegetables are so damn expensive. So how the fuck the poor gonna eat healthy off some damn tater chips? I'm mad that the government and the media are controlled by the same people and those same people are the ones who control everything. I hate that women get raped. I'm mad that I only got three minutes to say this poem and I got about 10 minutes worth of angry. I'm mad that the gay and lesbian cannot be out loud and proud in the military. I hate that only 28 states allow everyone to unite in holy matrimony and while I appreciate civil unions, 
fuck civil unions. If I move to another state, then the state of my civil union will be at stake. And what's that going to do for me in the uh, state of Wyoming? And believe it or not, I'm still pissed the fuck off about slavery. That's right. I'm still mad because I still pick cotton off of clothes racks and I never racked up reparations. Mad because niggers call each other niggers and sick because at any minute sister girl going to turn around and call me a bitch. I'm mad at black men for reasons I don't even have time to list. I'm pissed off at hip hop. I'm pissed off at black on black crime. I'm pissed off that Ricky Ross got all the crack and we can't turn that shit back. I'm pissed the fuck off. I'm mad because above anything, at any given space and at any given time, I as a black woman can suffer from racism, sexism, classism, homophobia. I could be raped, be beat, be burned alive and not a single soul will look up to acknowledge my absence from this universe because I am insignificant because I am a black woman and Finally, you see, I got every right to be pissed the fuck off. But most of the time, despite what you may believe, I'm really, really sweet. Yo, that was, that was crazy. That Thank was, um, <laughs> wow. Uh, Thanks for tuning into our show tonight. Thanks for watching. Um, we're on somewhat of a break next week, but we'll be back April 18th for some new stuff that we have for y'all. It's hell late, so we are all taking our black asses home. <laughs> Good night.